The Critic Show. I am very pleased to welcome James Hampton to the show, someone who's done it all. He's been an actor in several TV shows and films, but he's also been a very successful writer and director. Two of the films he's in have remakes attached to them. That would be The Longest Yard and Teen Wolf. I am so pleased to have the chance to talk to him about that, as well as his incredibly successful career. Well, Jim, thank you so much for joining us on The Critic Show. Oh, dear. It's a critic? Oh, my. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> well, we're in a good frame of mind today since you're on the show, so you don't have anything to worry about. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And, you know, you've had a very active career in uh, acting and directing since doing F Troop. And, as you know, there's many people that have their 15 minutes of fame, and then you never hear from them again. And so what are some of the reasons that you've been able to be in so many great productions and still be involved in the industry today? Well, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, it comes my way, and uh, people say, well, how how did you do that, or why did you do that, or whatever. And I think it really boils down to uh, the script and what the story is and how that's going to be uh, something that I, I can be. Um, over the years, I've been the, the good guy's uh, buddy, you know. Yep. Sometimes I get killed for that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I, I try to do a little of everything. I like to hang around um, character actors. Mm -hmm. You're not quite um, the Burt Reynolds. You're, <laughs> you're the Jimmy Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The reason why you've been able to do this for so long is that you you knew your range, you knew what you wanted to do, and you knew how to find it. Gosh, I must have let me write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you are you're 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 correct. Uh, you like that script? You can see yourself doing. You have done anything like that? Pretty girls are uh, are pretty good too. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, you're kind of known as the guy that people recognize the face but don't always remember the name. I have those mornings. <laughs> I think we all have those here and there. But but as far as your work's concerned, are there advantages and disadvantages to that? I think so. I, I, it's kind of a, a tribute if they think that you went to school with this guy. And they, the tribute, it seems to me, is that they that I'm a real person and uh, and and we're part of someone's life. Right. I'm, I'm happy for that. Do people still today uh, come across you in the street or in public somewhere and think that they've seen you somewhere? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. I, I've had people argue with me. They'll just start really off name. Right, people keep guessing who you are. One of them, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, how about Jim Hampton? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not him. Yeah, that's, uh, that is actually a happen. Wow. So, uh, yeah, but it makes things interesting. And, you know, um, Johnny Carson, God love him, he uh, had the whole audience uh, put their hands over their hearts and make them <laughs> to repeat after him. To pledge to remember who you are. Yeah. Yeah, you were on The Tonight Show many times. I mean, it seemed that Johnny Carson liked you a lot and that... I liked uh, him a lot, too. I was, I, he was a great guy. And if anything, it's great when somebody like Johnny Carson knows exactly who you are. But you and Burt Reynolds are also really good friends. In fact, you were in a few films together, like The Longest Yard. Um, how did all of that come about? Did you meet Burt somewhere, and he liked you just like Johnny Carson, and said, you know what, i got to be in films with this guy? Well, the first thing I did was a gun smoke. And, um, and he, was a, he was a blacksmith at that time on, on gun smoke. And um, I think he liked my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a wonderful actor. And particularly, he's, he's funny. You watched the beginning of The Longest Yard, and if for some reason you saw the Smoking the Bandit movies, before you saw The Longest Yard, you begin to think that every movie that Bert's in, he has to be chased by the police. You know, so when I look at that movie, The Longest Yard, and I think about the time it was made, it had to be pretty edgy for its time, I would think, because you look at the beginning of it, Bert's throwing uh, a woman to the ground and getting physical with her. You have the F-bomb dropped in it, the racial language yet... Amongst all of that, they managed to even throw humor in it and try to make the whole thing cohesive. But still, for its time, you almost kind of look at that and go, wow, that had to get some folks riled up. Yeah, it's true. I think it changed movies mm -hmm. for all the reasons that you've just named. I think that, that the star of the show has some things that are not very pleasant, Right. which is the way the world is. Mm -hmm. And you're right, the director uh, just turned his loose. And he, and he was a man's man, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Is the caretaker role the one part that people recognize you the most from? I think that's one because he's so likable. Mm-hmm, he is. And of all people, you'd want to see killed. I know. Particularly in a hideous way that I was killed. Yeah. You know, it breaks your heart. And, um, you know, it was funny. And I, I think you know, people gasp because they know what's coming. You know, my daughter, uh, when it would be on television, she would come and get really close. <laughs> when I got killed, I wasn't really killed. I explained to her, it, it's just, it's a story, honey. But that was not the part that was offered to me. Oh, really? Uh, this is going to come as a, a shock, but the guy that uh, was spying on the Mandarin group, Hunger, it was the name of the part. That's what he wanted me to, to, to play. Really? Yeah. Wow. Anyway, I had a, an interview with Bob. And uh, I said, well, I, in all due respect, sir, uh, I don't want to play that part. <laughs> and he said, really? What is it you'd like to play? And I said, well, I want to play caretaker. And he said, caretaker only has five lines. <laughs> and I said, now we've got five lines. I'll add a few. <laughs> and you know what? He saw that there was a chemistry mm -hmm. between me and, and Bert, and he, he literally turned us loose. Wow. The people sometimes ask me things like, uh, that swamp you were in, uh, was that really a swamp? <laughs> was it really mud, you know? Were you really there? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we didn't have CGI for that film. <laughs> so there, we get some funny uh, questions. Get funny, Scott. All right, you got it. For the next ten minutes, I'm going to be a barrel of laughs. <laughs> I'm I'm working on it. Did you see the remake of The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler? I have not seen it. I'm a big fan of Chris. I think he's hysterically funny. I just don't want to see somebody else doing that movie. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Well, I, I think you're in probably uh, good company with a great number of people. Well, a fella came up to me. I, I call them autograph shows. But he came up to me, and God love him. He said, you was in the, with that Burt Reynolds picture. And I said, yeah, we, we made a few pictures. And um, he said, no, no, that's the one in prison. And I said, yeah, the longest yard. He said, yeah, that's right. You know, they're making a movie of that. I said, yeah, I heard that. He said, you know, I thought it, that they'd done a pretty good job the first time. Right. <laughs> he wasn't interested in going to see the other one. He thought the first one was the... Uh, there's just something to be said about that, I think. When they sit down and decide to make a remake a movie like that, that so many people saw, so many people love, you wonder when they're developing the idea and are going to green light this, you know, what the thinking is. Because I, I say I would run into a lot more people these days that would act like the gentleman that was talking to you and say, I don't want to see a new version of it because I like the one that I saw. Yeah. Well, we're going to do Casablanca now. Oh, are you? <laughs> are you taking Bogart's place? <laughs> we could probably come up with a few others that shouldn't be remade, I'm sure. But I, I probably remember you most fondly as uh, Michael J. Fox's dad in Teen Wolf. Uh, isn't that a sweet part? It is a sweet part. And I'm one of those people that can visually remember scenes and lines from movies. I'm kind of you know, known as the, the member of the family that somebody says a line just from something and I'll just finish it. You know, you were talking about not originally being lined up for Caretaker. You were also not originally lined up to be the dad in that film. That's right. When I found out that your original part was for the basketball coach and I stop and right. think about the guy that plays him. And he was wonderful. Man. Yeah, he was great. And you know, I, I would assume your interpretation would have been very different. Yes, but his is funnier. But I went in to read for it and I didn't buy my best, and uh, they excused me, and I was leaving, and someone took their head out the door and said, uh, Mr. Hampton, would you mind if to wait a minute? I said, sure. So I waited, and I came back and said, would you read for the part of the, the father? Mm -hmm. We read the scene where um, I, you know, I should have, I probably should have told you about this a long time ago. <laughs> you know that one? Yes. And I thought, I'm going to do this picture to be a, a a wolf. I want to be a wolf. Yeah. And I said, at that time, there was only three or four uh, actors who had played that part. Right. So I wanted, I wanted to do it, and they said, okay, well, you're, you're it. Wow. So, so they saw a different way of going from the beginning, uh, and I give them 
credit for that because uh, I, I was and could be a scary guy. Yeah. Michael J. wanted to read with me from the first two lines. You just knew that that a relationship. There's there's no mother in this movie. You know, it's dad and it's, and it's me and so it's a movie that didn't have to be as good as it was. Right. Because it, it was a movie that's come out for teenagers in the summertime and so forth and so on. And a, a, not a very expensive movie at all. Mm-hmm. And um, it was touching, and uh, and it was it was honest. Right. And, um, you know, and I'm, I pray that Michael can lick this thing. You know, he's a guy that doesn't give up. He always wanted to do another take. <laughs> always wanted to see if we can improve it in some way to make it better than we, than it is. And I just, uh, I love him to that. Well, he seemed like an incredible guy to work with on set. I mean, both of you are really good at what you do. And, you know, you look at that movie, and I can't think of anybody else that would have fit that part as well as you guys did. And that says a lot for you both and what your chemistry must have been like uh, working together. Well, and we right away um, have something in common, and that's putting on the, the fur. Yeah, how long did that take? How long did it take to put all that makeup on? Hours. Hours? <laughs> <laughs> but it only takes about 30 seconds to pull it off. So. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. Don't forget, he did it for his, over his whole body. That's right. And uh, my, mine was just uh, the head and, you know, fingernails and that sort of thing. Well, you've not only been an actor, but, you know, you've, you've been a director as well. You've directed shows like Evening Shades, oddly enough, with Burt Reynolds as well. Uh, you've been a screenwriter. As you said, you've added lines to some of the very films that you've been in. So being that you've been on both sides of the camera, and we were just talking about this tendency to have things remade that probably shouldn't be remade, how do you see the state of the entertainment world today, the TV shows and movies that come out, and the quality of screenwriting and the quality of entertainment that we see, in, especially in film today? Well, this is where I start lying. <laughs> okay, well, we're prepared. Uh, to me, everything looks like the same. We haven't had one or two or three really good writer-directors. That's what I see. That, I think, in some humor wouldn't hurt things. Some good humor. Yes. But, you know, it's a, it's a generational thing. I, I'm, I'm 75 now, so the things that make me hide it are, are 50 years ago and things like that. And it's absolutely a generational thing. It's almost like that next generation comes out, and their their sense of what's funny and what's humor is so very different, and that's why you hear so many people go, well, you know, they don't make them like they used to. I mean, we mentioned a second ago that sometimes it's not always a good idea to try to remake something, but is it ever a good idea to remake something that's already been done? The most uh, recent one is the one that uh, uh, John Wayne had had done at one point. And, uh, True Grit? Yeah. Yeah. And Now, that's a good story. I can think of that one. As an acceptable one? Yes. Mm, That really is a good example of one. Well, we're going to take a short break here, but when we come back, our special guest will answer a few questions from the Critic Show listeners. The Critic Show. We're talking to writer, director, and actor James Hampton. You've seen him in movies like The Longest Yard and Teen Wolf, and he's here with us today to talk about those movies and answer some of your questions. So, Jim, I have a few questions here from our listeners, if you're open to answering a few of these. Um, I have one from Sharon in California, Mm -hmm. and she wanted to know, what do you think about the renewed interest in Teen Wolves in movies like Twilight and, of course, the recently, I guess you could call it, at least the title spin from uh, the Teen Wolf MTV series. What do you think about the renewed interest in Teen Wolves and things like that in movies like Twilight? And let's move right along. <laughs> not the, More or less, it's just not the same thing. Is that what you mean? Yeah. I, the only thing about it that I can see is the title. Yeah. Apart from that, I I don't recognize it. 
I have a question from uh, Laura in Arizona, and she said, you appeared in several television shows and films. Do you prefer TV or film more? Well, they're different, but, um, for instance, on most of the sitcoms, they have an audience. I uh, wrote and uh, directed something when I was working on the Evening Shade. Mm-hmm. And when you hear that burst of laughter, yeah. the first one, it's just, you're going to sleep well. Yeah. <laughs> that's I bet so. It's uh, it's great. It's the greatest thing that can you can do if you're if you're an actor, a writer. I have a question here from Jennifer in Texas and she says you've done a number of comedic roles. After F Troop did you get typecast for comedy roles or were those things that you actively sought out? I worked hard and did things so I could show you that I don't have to be funny all the time or whatever. I, I play the Ku Klux Klan. Right. And um, and I think we did that show better than the, the movie, personally, because uh, it was more realistic. Yeah. And uh, there is no redeeming. <laughs> They're just bad. Let's get rid of them. Um, but yeah, I, on purpose, did some uh, things like that so that I wouldn't be just... Just, just the funny guy. Yeah. Well, our last question uh, is from Sean from Louisiana, and he brings up another popular film that we haven't brought up that I'm, I'm sure you look fondly upon. He says, my favorite James Hampton film is Condor Man. I have always been a huge fan of that movie. With the disguises, gadgets, James Bond style cars, and super action sequences, it had to be a blast to film. So I'd like to know what James's favorite moments or memories on and off camera are about the production of Condor Man. I opened the first page, and it says, Morning, the Eiffel Tower. And uh, I just closed it up. I said, I'm going to France. Oh, there you go. And it was just, it it was wonderful. And um, Michael Crawford was sensational. Yes. So were all the others. Condor Man was was cool. You know, that was before Batman and all those kind of, you know. uh, Condor Man, it was invented by them for what it was. Mm-hmm. And Crawford will do anything. This guy, <laughs> yeah, he will do anything. And he's great. He was great. Well, it's been great talking to you, Jim, about all the things you've done and get a good perspective on not only today's entertainment world, but looking back at all the magnificent things that you've done. And I really appreciate you taking the time to share it with us on The Critic Show. Brighten up when I see you because you know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Jim. I really appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you because you know what you're talking about as well. And I thank you very much for being on the show. Hope to talk to you again sometime soon.